What's up, everybody? And this is Danny with a special dual unboxing of the Samsung Galaxy S4 and HTC One Google Play editions. These are available now on the Google Play Store. So, what do you guys think about me giving away one of these things? Well, if this video hits a thousand likes, follow me on Twitter at Super Scientific, and I will announce the details for this giveaway. So, let's take a look. It's time for MTP flyers to get really upset because I'm about to read the specs of this thing. It comes with 4G LTE connectivity. 5 inch Super AMOLED 1080p display, 1.9 gigahertz quad core processor with a 13 megapixel camera and a 2600 milliamp battery. The HTC One also comes with a quad core Snapdragon 600 processor but clocked a little lower at 1.7 gigahertz and it comes with 32 gigabytes of storage instead of the 16 gigabytes that you will find on the Samsung Galaxy S4. And it comes with a 4.7 inch 1080p display, the HTC Ultra Pixel Camera, which is 4 megapixels, and it also comes with LTE connectivity, which is more effectively the AT&T versions pretty much for both of these, and they come unlocked, so it will work with AT&T and T-Mobile, but AT&T has the 3G HSPA Plus connectivity. So let's go ahead and start with the HTC One and see what comes in the box. Nothing has really changed between the boxes even, except for that Google logo that you will see on the right hand side. There is the HTC One. It comes with the wall charger, the micro USB to USB cord, and it comes with some headphones. And these are some good headphones, by the way, so it's good that they included these. And it comes with a SIM ejector tool, a bunch of papers you don't need, and some HTC stickers. So it is only available in the silver. I wish it was available in the black, but it's not. So let's go ahead and take the wrapping off of this. And this is the exact same beautiful, almost all metal HTC One that you will get with your carrier. And we'll take a further look at it in a little bit. So this is the Samsung Galaxy S4. Let's go ahead and unbox this. And there is the Galaxy S4 right there. We'll put that to the side and you will get literature that you probably don't need to read at all. We'll go ahead and throw that to the side. Some headphones, micro USB to USB cord, some sizable earbuds, and you also get your wall plug. Very standard. And here is your 2600 milliamp removable battery, which is awesome to have. So let's go ahead and take the plastic off and take a look a little further and the awesome thing about having this removable back plate is that you have a removable battery and with the sim card slot you also have a micro sd card slot which we were never able to really get in a nexus type device before this is the first time that we get a stock android experience out of the box with micro sd card support and removable battery so let's power these things on and see how fast they boot up. And I'm also going to take the manufacturer devices and also compare how fast Sense5 and TouchWiz also boot. So right away you'll see that the Sense5 version with this fast boot is already up and running. And second is the Galaxy S4 Google Play Edition. And the other two are still booting. And there is the HTC One Google Edition in third place. And now finally, the AT&T version of the Galaxy S4. So here they both are, all booted up in its stock Android glory. And they look awesome. And if you're a fan of Nexus devices, then this will be very familiar to you. And very, very responsive since it doesn't have any kind of manufacturer overlay on it. And you can see how fast these devices are. And this is probably pretty close to the Nexus experience. There are a few differences since they do have some customizations on top of this stock Android, which I will show you later, but the two finger swipe down works perfectly. And if you look at the two displays though, it looks like that the Galaxy S4 display is just a little bit brighter here. And of course, more saturated from the AMOLED display, but Android 4.2.2 on board right here. No Android 4.3, which I was hoping for out of the box, but they said it will be upgraded fairly soon since there's been a lot of leaks and even some ROMs out there already. So just looking at the screens alone, the Galaxy S4 screen is looking a little bit brighter, but the color accuracy on the HTC One is a lot better. 
So pricing wise, the HTC One is the cheaper out of the two at $600. And the Samsung Galaxy S4 is $650, but these things come unlocked and have no subsidies, so you just kind of take it to whatever GSM carrier you want. So this is US only for now, and Sprint and Verizon customers get the shaft again. But if you have a GSM carrier, then these are for you. And also probably good for prepaid as well. So let's get into the interface here. Uh, stock Android is very, very fluid, very simplified. This is exactly what Google has envisioned Android to look like. And I personally am a huge fan of this, but the button layout down here, you can see that there is a physical home button and there's a menu button as well for that hasn't been on stock Android in a long time. And if you long press the home button, you get Google Now. And to access your multitasking, you're going to have to double tap the home button to get to it. So definitely a different layout than the Nexus 4 since the Nexus 4 now has soft buttons on the screen. So hardware buttons haven't been around for a little while. So this is a little bit of a different experience. So there is the familiar 13 megapixel camera sensor. And don't forget to take that little plastic piece off. And the original Galaxy S4 takes very sharp pictures, so I don't think this will be any different, but I will definitely put it to the test with video and sample images. And on the back, you will find that little speaker nipple. Yes, I said nipple. And that keeps it from going completely flat on the surface and muffling it up. And on the back, you will see the micro SD card expansion slot, which is very huge for stock Android devices and the removable battery. That is the big downside of the Play Edition Samsung Galaxy S4 because it only comes with 16 gigabytes of storage for apps. And here is the camera app, but we'll go further into the camera later on. So let's go and take a look at the Play Edition HTC One. And the hardware looks exactly the same. It's got that same 4.7 inch 1080p display with the ridiculous high pixel per inch density. And there is the short toggles now that's available. And the screen looks a little dimmer to me, though, in this version compared to my developer edition. And I will show you that a little bit later. But it is really snappy, and it's just as fast. It was on the Sense 5 edition, maybe even faster. And the button layout here, you hold the home button to get to Google Now. Double tap on the home button for multitasking. And there is no menu button, though, like there is on the Galaxy S4. No long press on the back there. For menu, what you're going to get is the regular menu button on the corner that you would get on a Nexus device or that you got on your Sense 5 edition of the HTC One. So that is a little bit different and some people might prefer this and some people might not. So the HTC One here is not all completely stock either for it has support for Beats Audio for its boom sound front facing stereo speakers and that is not in the stock ROM of Android 4.2.2 so that is good they retain this so there are some differences here and there but that's the good thing because if they would have lost Beats audio here and boom sound it would have been a big loss for the HTC One for those speakers are incredible so there is the difference the bottom is the developers edition 64 gigabyte HTC One and the up top is the Google Play Edition. And look at the screen differences. Definitely a warmer screen on the Play Edition. And I think that the Developer's Edition has a little bit brighter screen, if you look. And that's the one thing that I've noticed right away. But if you're, fam if you're a fan of the warmer display, then you're going to be fine with the Play Edition. But you can see the differences there definitely and the Beats logo shows up on the Sense 5 edition but even though Beats is activated you will not see that in the Google Play edition you just don't see anything at all but Beats audio is activated but take a look at the whites there and the color replication definitely a difference on both of those screens so let's take a look at Sense 5 real quick versus the stock ROM and there's blink feed which is a social aggregator there which some people hate I don't really mind it because it's just kind of tucked to the left there and sense 5 is actually very good it's very lightweight so it doesn't look too too much different sense used to be very heavy on its customization it still is but it's not anywhere near as bad so you can tell that there's a difference but sense 5 runs very fast and there are more customizations available for Sense 5 than there are on the Play Edition, 
or stock Android. So be cognizant of that as well for stock Android is very, very bare bones, but you know, you don't have all this overlay over Android. You're starting with a clean slate and then adding things on. So the ultra pixel camera is kind of a big deal here on the HTC One since they touted this very heavily in their marketing. And the camera interfaces are definitely different. You're going to get a lot more of options here on the HTC One with Sense 5. You're going to get live filters. You're going to get a lot of different shooting modes. And here with the Play Edition, you're just going to get that stock Google camera software, which some people like and some people don't like. But there's definitely more options with the Sense 5 since the regular Google stock camera is very bare bones. But the thing that you will get is Photosphere, which is very neat, and you will not get that in the HTC One stock as of right now. But you can always sideload the APK of the camera app, and you can get Photosphere on your Sense5 HTC One. So the gallery is drastically different here in the two versions. Uh, the HTC Sense version has some live animated events and folders, which are very cool. They look nice. And you're also going to be missing Zoe Share, which is a very cool uh, thing that I really like to share your photos and videos. Where if you put into Zoe mode, it's going to take a few seconds of video and also take burst shots in succession and just kind of stitch all those things together for you. So you're going to be missing all of these HTC customizations that happen in their camera. And even though there is some editing features in the stock camera, you're not going to get anything like this where you can add different effects and retouch the photos or do sequence shot like this. And there's just so many more camera features on here. So think about that. If you're a big camera person and want a lot of features, then you definitely don't want to go with the Play Edition. And your IR blaster that's at the very top by the power button is also dormant unlike this Sense 5 edition where it has the software to. So let's move on to the Samsung Galaxy S4 and there is the TouchWiz version on the right hand side and to me these screens look pretty good. They look almost the same. I don't see any difference like I did in the HTC One and you can see how heavily customized TouchWiz is and a little bit of lag there too uh, on repopulating that widget there and that's the biggest concern for me on the TouchWiz devices is the lag and that's why I'm very excited about this play edition more than the HTC One because I think that the Samsung Galaxy S4 definitely needs this experience and I am looking forward to a lag free experience but you're going to be missing out on a lot of stuff Samsung has a lot of customizations like this multi-window view where you can do two things at once. You're going to be missing all of these gestures that uh, they touted and marketed heavily where you don't have to touch the screen and you can just go ahead and scroll there. You're going to be missing all of the hover features. So all that cool stuff that you see in the commercials or if you want to show off your phone, that stuff is missing from the Play Edition. And so you have to think about that. These things are totally missing. So if you want to sit there and uh, show off your phone and do all these gestures, then it is missing on the Play Edition. So think about that before you purchase. I'm sure that will be taken care of by custom software. And the IR blasters at the top are the same as the HTC One where he doesn't come with the actual Play Edition ROM. But I was able to put Watch On on the Play Edition ROM and it worked just fine. The barometer and hygrometer is also laying dormant unless there is third-party applications to take advantage of it. And you're also going to be missing a lot of camera features here. Beauty face, sound and shot, drama, animated photo, all that is not here. But once again, it's not completely stock because it has support for these view covers like this Spigen SGP Slim Armor view cover. And it has no problem with that you even gain a little animation from the TV tube sleep and if you have a S charger cover for your Samsung Galaxy S4 then that is also supported on the Play Edition and you can see it has no problem whatsoever charging wirelessly with that expensive back cover and plate so what do you guys think about these Play Editions I mean they're not exactly Nexus devices but they're giving you pure Android on these flagship devices that are probably the most popular devices of this year. Google stated that Nexus devices will not stop. 
So I think this is more of an experiment here or telling Android manufacturers it's okay to go ahead and release stock Android devices or giving people the choice of having stock Android. I wish that we could just have stock Android on any device and go ahead and do a boot, but maybe this is the first step. Now, these devices are not for the mainstream. I think these are more for geeks and, you know, tech lovers such as you and me that are watching this video and to have pure Google on something that we couldn't have before without rooting, modding, and customizing. So I'm all for it. Let's see how much demand there is out there for it. I will have a lot more coverage of these devices, so please subscribe to my channel and follow me on Twitter at Super Scientific for this is where I will keep you updated on all the giveaways, news, and everything else. So don't miss another video, and I will see you in the next one. See you guys.